Hello interstellar everyone, welcome to class 12 biology. With this video we are going to start a new chapter that is chapter number 15 biodiversity and conservation. So this chapter is going to be the final chapter in your class 12 biology uh, syllabus for the year 2020. Right. So the chapter name is biodiversity and conservation. So uh, when we talk about biodiversity in the introductory part itself it has been established that our earth contains uh, a rich number of different plants and animals right different types of plants and animals so for example we have got about 20,000 different species of ants we have got about 300,000 different species of beetles right so we have uh, 28,000 different species of fishes and we have uh, 20,000 different species of orchid plants now some important questions to understand the significance of uh, such diversity or such biodiversity is why are there so many species? How did this diversification come about? And how and why is this diversity important to the biosphere? And would the bio uh, biosphere function any differently if the diversity was much less? And how do humans benefit from the diversity of life? So, uh, these are some of the questions, important questions, if we need to understand, right? We need to ask ourselves if we need to understand the significance of biodiversity on the planet Earth. Now, uh, how do we define biodiversity? If we look at the term itself, we can see two, it's a combination of two words, like bio means life forms. Diversity means variations. So, variations in the life forms is called as biodiversity. Now, uh, we can also call biodiversity as heterogeneity of life. It's the same thing. Heterogeneity means uh, homogeneous means similar, right? Heterogeneous means different. So, different forms of life, right? Variations in the life form. That is called as biodiversity. And this variation, right? So, this variation occurs at various levels of biological organizations, starting from molecules to biomes. Now, the term biodiversity was popularized by a person called Edward Wilson. Remember, Edward Wilson is not the person who coined the term biodiversity, but he is the person who popularized the term biodiversity. So, according to uh, Edward Wilson, biodiversity describes the combined diversity at all the levels of biological classification. Right? And uh, we can also say that uh, the diversity or the variation that occurs at different levels of biological organization. Right? So when we talk about biological organization, so we have uh, already studied about that in our previous classes, right? It starts from molecules. We won't go about, uh, we, we won't talk about atoms. We will talk about uh, molecules. So starting from biomolecules, it goes from biomolecules to cell organelles, then cell Tissues, organ, organ system, organism, population, community, ecosystem, right? And then uh, biomes and then full biosphere. So the diversity it exists or the variation it exists at all these levels. And the combination of the diversity in all these levels, it forms biodiversity. Right? So in our textbook, we are going to discuss only about the three important levels of diversity. Right. Diversity which exists in three important levels. The first one is genetic diversity. So the genetic diversity means the total number of genetic characteristics within a species. We are talking at a species level. In a single species, there are differences in the individuals of those species. Right? Species uh, in one species, let's say uh, raw wolfia vomitoria, the examples are important. Right. So, in a species of a plant called as raw wolfia vomitoria, it shows genetic variation in terms of potency and concentration of chemical called reserpine. So, raw wolfia vomitoria is a species of a plant which grows in the Himalayan ranges. Right. And then, uh, among the individuals of raw wolfia vomitoria, there are variations, genetic variations. And how does these individuals vary from each other? They vary in terms of the potency and concentration of the chemical which is obtained from them that is called as reserpine. And reserpine is used in medicine. It is used in the treatment of uh, hypertension, right, blood pressure, etc. So, uh, 
Raw wolfia vomitura is one example that you should remember. It grows in Himalayan ranges and the variations exist among individuals of raw wolfia vomitoria because of genetic variation. But the genes are different. Now, another example right, that you can give regarding genetic diversity is in India, we have about 5,000 different strains. Now, remember, it is called as strains, not species, right? In India, we have more than 50,000 different strains of rice. Right? Rice, the species, is rice. Right? All rice belong to species, same species. Right? So, uh, there are 50,000 different strains of rice. And these differences in the strains of rice, it occurs due to genetic variation. And same goes with mango. So there are about 1,000 varieties of mango in India. Right? So uh, that is about genetic diversity. Then we have species diversity. Now when we talk about species diversity, we have to uh, talk about a community. Right? In a community or in a region. Right? Uh, total number of different species found in a community or in a region. For example, if we compare between Western Guards and Eastern Guards of India, right, Western Guards and Eastern Guards of India, we find that there are greater a number of amphibian species found in Western Guards as compared to Eastern Guards. Right. So we are talking about uh, the number of different species found within a community. So some community, they have got more species in them and some community, they have got less species in them. For example, Western Guards, if we take Western Guards as a community, right? so uh, Western Guards, they have got uh, greater diversity in terms of amphibian species compared to Eastern Guards. So that is the second one, that is species diversity. And then next one is ecological diversity, diversity which occurs in uh, ecosystems. So if we talk about two large areas, right, if we talk about large areas, in a very large area such as a country, right, in one country we can have many different types of ecosystems. So the variations in the ecosystem found in a region, like a large area, like a country, that is called as ecological diversity. For example, right, we have in India, we have got different types of ecosystems. We have deserts. Right. We have rainforests, we have mangroves, we have got coral reefs, we have got wetlands, estuaries and alpine meadows. India is quite rich in ecological diversity. We have got different forms of ecosystem found within the same country. Right. And if we compare India with Norway, right, India has got much greater diversity of ecosystems. Right. Norway is a Scandinavian country, has got less number of ecosystems compared to India. Okay. So that is about ecological diversity. So you can see over here in India we have got mangroves. Right? Mangroves means uh, the, the forest that grows near seashores like we have in West Bengal area. Okay. Then we have desert. We have got in Rajasthan. We have got coral reefs near Tamil Nadu. We have got rainforests. We have got estuaries, rainforests are found in northeastern parts, right? And we have got estuaries, we have got wetlands, and we have got alpine meadows as well. Right? So these are the different forms of ecosystems found in India. Right? So India is quite rich in terms of ecological diversity. Now let's talk about uh, species diversity on Earth and then species diversity in India. So first we will talk about the species diversity on Earth. Right? number of species found on in the world okay so if we talk about global species diversity we don't have the exact number as of now we can estimate how many different types of species are found on earth so uh, if we talk only about the total number of species described so far by the biologists by studying them right biologists they study different species so they have formed an inventory or they have formed a list of species that they have described so far and in year 2004 biologists they have described about uh, 1.5 million different species right this is according to IUCN 2004 IUCN stands for International Union for Conservation of Nature right? so the total number of species described so far is a little bit more than 1.5 million but this is not a comprehensive or this is not the uh, exhaustive list of the species found on the planet Earth. We have 
we haven't explored each and every corner of this particular planet right to exactly tell number of species found on planet earth so uh, there are, there are different scientists who come up with different estimates right some of the estimates are quite extreme they say there are there are more than 20 to 50 million uh, species on planet earth but a more reasonable a more logical estimate is given by robert may right so global species diversity is, is estimated by robert may to be about 7 million right so this is said to be quite reasonable quite scientific okay so uh, of this 7 uh, of this 1.5 million described species 70% are animals and 22% are plants and if you if you look in the animals if you look in the uh, number of animals we can we find that insects are most abundant compared to other animals right? uh, insects they comprise about 70 percent of the animal species that means out of every 10 animals seven are insects now you can google this particular question it is quite important right why there are so many species of insects found on earth what led to the diversification of insects right? you can google this question why there are so many species of insects on earth why are insects so successful on this planet earth so you can try to google this okay that is the one now we have got uh, some charts right pie diagrams given textbook this is quite important from examination point of view so figure number 15.1 right it is uh, these pie charts they represent the global biodiversity right so the proportionate number of species of major taxa of plants invertebrates and vertebrates so if you look at invertebrates you can find that most of the invertebrates they are insects i already told you right in animal kingdom both invertebrate and vertebrate 70 percent are insects okay so uh, in invertebrates the maximum number of species are formed by insects and then we have got mollusk crustaceans and other animal groups okay so uh, this is about the invertebrates and in vertebrates right, in the vertebrates uh, section we have uh, fishes which contribute the maximum number of species and then we have birds and reptiles which are almost similar and then we have mammals and amphibians so you need to know this particular diagram so which is the maximum contribution which has got the maximum contribution in terms of species number in vertebrates so they are fishes and mammals and amphibians they contribute the same birds and reptiles they contribute the same okay so uh, that is about vertebrates and if you look in the plant section right so you can clearly see over here fungi and angiosperms they are almost equal in terms of diversity in species number Okay, so the species number is almost same between fungi and angiosperm. I'm really not sure whether fungi can be included in plants or not. If we say that uh, cells having cell wall can be categorized under plants, then maybe fungi is also a plant. But we have studied about classification in class 11, right? Fungi belongs to a complete different kingdom. So yeah, for our convenience, we have considered, considered fungi under plants. Right? So fungi. So the species, different types of species, are found in the group fungi is quite large. is comparable to angiosperms, algae, lichens, ferns, mosses. They are all uh, quite less compared to fungi and angiosperms. So this is the uh, number of species found on in the uh, world or on planet Earth. And then if we talk about the number of uh, species found in India, uh, we, have, we need to highlight over here that India has a, only about 2.4% of world's land area. But with this small proportion of land, small portion of land on the planet Earth, uh, India contributes about 8.1% of global species diversity. So India has quite a large number of species diversity in the world. So therefore, India is considered as one of the 12 mega diversity countries in the world. Right? So what do you mean by mega diversity countries? Mega diversity countries are those countries which contains 
a large number of species diversity and India is one of them right India uh, as per land surface area India contributes only about 2.4 percent but with this small amount of land India contributes 8.1 percent of global species diversity right so therefore India is one of the 12 mega diversity countries in the world so I got this diagram or I got this picture from Wikipedia in the Wikipedia it is said that uh, these green parts these green shaded parts are the countries right uh, are the 17 countries which are identified as mega diverse countries by the conservation international called conservation international they have identified these 17 countries as mega diverse uh, countries in the world okay so that is about uh, in this particular video so in the next video we are going to talk about patterns of biodiversity and then we also talk about the importance of biodiversity and in the importance of biodiversity please read about rivet popper hypothesis so try to understand what this particular hypothesis mean right so uh, please read these two sections before you watch the next video thank you